life had conceived supernaturally is also found in China where they're non-Christians and also believe that a child would be born of a goddess mother woman. And this is what we see right here on the educational channel. The dialogue which follows recalls how an earthly father and a heavenly mother had a child. A child which here they offer to the community. The child is art. Now Mary is often called the Queen of Heaven, but Mary is not the Queen of Heaven. The title Queen of Heaven is ascribed to a pagan mother goddess long before Mary was born, clear back in the days of Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 7.18 it says, The children gathered wood and the fathers kindled fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven. And therefore they provoked the Lord to anger. Now let's go to Thailand and you'll see what they believe to be the Queen of heaven. Temple of Ma Tzu in Tainan. Busloads of pilgrims come here daily, sometimes carrying their local Ma Tzu statues for what seems like a spiritual recharge. Ma Tzu was a fisherman's daughter, a virgin of great gifts and piety, who did miracles, died young, and during four centuries was promoted, till in the 17th century, the emperor raised her to the rank of Queen of Heaven. Now again, one of the titles by which Isis was known was the Mother of God. Later this same title became applied to Mary by the theologian Alexandria. Mary was of course the mother of Jesus, but only in the sense of his human nature, his humanity. Now the original meaning of Mother of God went beyond this and attached a glorified position to the beholder. Now, in examining the 15th edition of the Roman Catholic Bible, we see here the coronation of Mary along with the title Queen of Heaven. Now that the title Queen of Heaven is an international symbol amongst many different religions opposed to Christianity is plain and clear. In a book called World Religions, it says, indeed the Queen of Heaven, the Universal Mother, was known by many names in the ancient world. For example, there is Artemis or Diana. It was in Ephesus that the Great Mother was known as Diana. Her temple was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Now a picture of this was found in the Encyclopedia of World Religion where we see Artemis or Diana of Ephesus found in the book of Acts. She was worshipped as the mother of God and the queen of heaven. Amongst this statue was many breasts found and this symbolizes how she would feed all of the nations and that she would be a universal mother along with a tower of Babel type crown found upon her head. Now in Egypt the mother was known as Isis and her child as Horus and that it was very common for the religious monuments of Egypt to show the infant Horus seated on the lap of his mother. Now, we've also found other statues of Isis and Horus. And in this next upcoming picture, in a different book, we find again the goddess Isis suckling her infant son Horus. And she also was worshipped as the mother of God or the goddess mother. Now this false worship, having spread from Babylon to the various nations in different names and forms, finally came to be established at Rome throughout the Roman Empire. Now it was during this period when the worship of the Divine Mother was very prominent that the Savior Jesus Christ founded the true New Testament church. What a glorious church it was in those early days. But by the 3rd and 4th century, however, what was known as the church had in many ways departed from the original faith, falling into apostasy about which the apostle had warned. Now when this falling away came, much paganism was mixed right in with Christianity. Unconverted pagans were taken into professing churches and in numerous instances were allowed to continue many of their pagan rites and customs, usually with few reservations. Now let's go to that program to show how paganism crept into Christianity and its mixture. Christian Rome are somehow combined in a compromise. The baths of Diocletian became a church. The temple of Minerva became become the shrine of the Virgin Mary. When we go to the Pantheon, for example, here in Rome, which still stands, we have to remember the vision that Hadrian had before he built it, when the goddess Sibylle said to him, 
I will be with you in the battles you're going to fight, but make this my temple. Hadrian went further. He made it the temple of all the gods under city. But when Christianity came, this became a shrine to the Virgin Mary. Here in the Campidoglio, we see a statue of the goddess Minerva. And here we see a church called Santa Maria Sopra Minerva. Holy Mary on top of Minerva. Her church has been raised on the ruins of the temple of a pagan goddess. There are two elements, the pagan and the Christian, but that's not enough. In the middle of the square, we see a Roman emperor, Marcus Aurelius, who wasn't a great conqueror, a great letter of blood. He was a Stoic. He believed in working hard, behaving sensibly, behaving justly, not hoping for too much from life, following, in fact, the philosophy of Stoicism. Three elements, then, pagan, Christian, Stoic. And to crown it all, the human touch, these buildings are the work of Michelangelo, who is sometimes believed, and is certainly believed by me, to be a greater architect than he was either a sculptor or a painter. And he's created this final magic which brings the human, the Christian, the pagan, and the Stoic together. Now bear in mind that this is a program off of cable TV, the educational channel. One of the best examples of such a carryover from paganism may be seen in the way the professing church allows the worship of the Great Mother to continue, only slightly in different forms and with a new name. You see, many pagans had been drawn to Christianity, but so strong was their adoration for the Mother Goddess, they did not want to forsake her. So compromising church leaders saw that if they could find some similarity between the two, they could greatly increase the numbers in the church. Now here we see a 15th edition Catholic Bible, it says, to Jesus through Mary. Now we'll examine to see if this is definitely a biblical concept. Now who could replace the great mother goddess of paganism? Of course, Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was the most logical person for them to choose. Little by little, the worship that had been associated with the pagan mother was transferred to Mary. But Mary was no part of the original Christian faith. It is evident that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a fine, dedicated, and godly woman, especially chosen to bear the body of our Savior. Yet none of the apostles or Jesus ever hinted at the idea of Mary worship. The Encyclopedia Britannica states that during the first century of the church, no emphasis was placed upon Mary whatsoever. This point is admitted by the Catholic Encyclopedia, and encyclopedias are not to be taken out of the church. So here's a quote from the Catholic Encyclopedia, which says, Devotions to our Blessed Lady, in its ultimate analysis, must be regarded as a practical application of the doctrines of the communion of saints. Now, seeing that this is not a doctrine contained explicitly in the early forms of the Apostle Creed, there is perhaps no ground for surprise if we do not meet with any of its clear traces of the Blessed Virgin Mary in the first Christian century, the worship of Mary being a later development. In the Catholic Encyclopedia, volume 15, page 459. Now why then couldn't they be allowed to continue their prayer and devotion to the Mother Goddess, only call her by a different name? Well, apparently this is the reasoning employed, for this is exactly what happened. It was not until the time of Constantine, the early part of the 4th century, that anyone began to look to Mary as a goddess. Mary worship was officially known by the Catholic Church as an official doctrine at the Council of Ephesus in 431. Remember Diana of Ephesus? Ephesus was the capital of the Mother Goddess. It was at Ephesus, my friends. It was in this city that Diana had been worshipped as the goddess of virginity and the motherhood from primitive times. She was said to be representing all of the nations. And so many powers were behind her that she was shaped with many breasts 
feeding these nations. A tower-shaped crown, a symbol of the Tower of Babel, adorned her head. When beliefs are held by people for centuries, they are not easily forsaken. So church leaders at Ephesus, as they were falling away, came also to reason that if people would be allowed to hold their ideas about the mother goddess, and if this could be mixed into Christianity, they would gain more converts. Now, Roman Catholicism teaches that Mary is a mediator, that she can act on the behalf of a poor sinner. Yet the scriptures make it plain that there is only one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus in 1 Timothy 2 and 5. Mediatrix 